Wingspan is a tabletop game for one to five players, ages 14 and up, and each game runs 40 to 70 minutes long. Each player receives one player mat, eight action cubes of one color, two random bonus cards, five random bird cards, and five food tokens, one of each type. Each player can keep up to five of the bird cards, but they must discard one food token for every bird card they keep. Then they will choose one bonus card to keep and discard the other. The action cubes represent the eight actions that each player will have in each round of the game. Each player will take one action at a time and then rotate to the next player until they're out of actions. Actions include playing a bird, gaining food, laying eggs, and drawing bird cards. To play a bird card, a player will place one of their action cubes on the play a bird spot of their board, then place a card into one of the three habitats. Each row is considered a habitat. You can only play a bird card in the habitat that matches the top left of the card. If there's only one symbol, it can only go in that one habitat. If there's more than one symbol, it can go in any of those habitats. The card must be placed in the leftmost open spot within a habitat. The first column for each habitat doesn't have an egg cost, but once you place the second, third, fourth, or fifth card inside of a habitat, you'll have to pay the egg cost. And once that card is placed, the turn is over and the next player goes. Cards with a pink border at the bottom have actions that are triggered by other players' actions. Cards with the brown banner at the bottom are triggered when an action cube is played on top of them. The process for gaining food, laying eggs, and drawing bird cards is exactly the same. Just choose the row that corresponds with the action you want, and then place one of your action cubes in the leftmost available spot in that row. If you were going in this spot, you'd gain two eggs. So in this example, you would take three eggs, then you would move your cube to the next spot, place it on top of the card, and perform whatever action is written at the bottom of that card. Then you'll move to the next card, perform that action, then move your action cube and leave it there to mark that your turn is over. If you wanted to draw bird cards, you'd place your cube in the leftmost available spot, and then take the number of cards shown in that spot. When drawing a bird card, you have the option to take any of the face-up cards first. If you don't like those, you can draw randomly from the deck. This spot allows you to take one card, and if you like, you can discard an egg and take a second card. When gaining food, you have to look at the wooden dice in the bird feeder. Note that this game comes with a bird feeder for rolling the dice, but I found it clunky, so I use this cap instead. You can only take one of whatever are available on those dice. If all the dice available in the bird feeder are exactly the same, you have the option to take one of those or re-roll all five dice into the bird feeder and then select from whatever's available. Once you decide which food you want, you'll take that die out of the bird feeder and then take the food token. When playing the bird card, you have to look at a few different things. First, is there an egg cost in the column that you're placing it in? Secondly, which habitat does it belong to? And third, which resources are needed to play this card? The top left section of the card shows you which resources are needed to play the card. If there's a plus sign shown, that means you need each of those resources to play that card. If there's a slash, that means you need one of any of the options to play that card. You can only lay eggs if you have a nest available, and each card shows you how many eggs it can hold. You can never hold more eggs than the available nests. When you lay eggs, you can place them on any available nest anywhere on the board. The circle with multiple colors means that it's wild, and you can use any resource to pay. There are four types of nests on these cards. The platform, the bowl, the cavity, and the ground. These could earn different points in different games depending on what the goals are. When all players are out of action cubes, that round is complete. Look at the goal board to see what position each player is in. Each player will place one of their action cubes on the first row of the goal board, marking how many points they earned in that round. That action cube stays on the goal board. So now for round two, every player has one less action than in round one. Each round players will do this, so every round has one less action than the prior round. Once all four rounds are complete and no actions are left, the game is over. Some cards allow you to cash food, which means you would take one of your food tokens and place it on top of that card it counts as a point at the end of the game. Some cards allow you to tuck cards, which means you'll place another card underneath that card on the game board. Points are earned in the following categories. Birds, meaning how many birds were played on the board, you'll count the number next to the feathers. Then bonus cards. Each bonus card has a different point value. End of round goals. Look at the goal board to see how many points each player earned. Every egg left on the board is worth one point. Food that is on the cards is worth one point each. And then tucked cards are worth one point each. Add them up and the player with the highest score wins. And that's how to play Wingspan.